one of the motivating factors for me to put in this new fence and create this area here was to put in some more fruit trees. Now the trees that I wanted to grow were a couple of citrus which will go along this space here and continue along from the citrus that I already have along this wall. I'm hoping to plant a mandarin and also have a go at getting a tangelo. I planted what I thought was a tangelo and what was marked as a tangelo some years ago but it actually turned out to be an orange. So hopefully this time it's actually true to what the label says. The other thing I wanted to have a go at growing in here was some avocados. Now I have tried growing avocados here before and have failed. You can quite successfully grow avocados in Tasmania and actually a few kilometres away from where I live there is a commercial avocado plantation that is doing quite well. Climate is okay with the right varieties and those plants will grow quite successfully. However, my major issue in terms of avocados is the soil that I have here which is a fairly heavy clay soil and that's not ideal for avocados. So what I have done is started working creating a space here where I can actually bring some soil in and add that on top of my existing soil and at the same time achieve good drainage. Now my preparation here has been to ensure that the native soil is nice and loose and then also to bring some gravel along the fence so that it won't be an area where moisture will, or water will pool in winter but it will actually freely drain on the natural slope away from the fence area. That actually will protect my fence from being excessively waterlogged. Also help the avocados drain. The other thing I've done is to put some iron along the back of the fence this is basically to protect the fence rails because first you might say why am I putting iron onto an iron fence probably because it seems a bit silly but it's to protect the fence rail because the fence rail itself is not designed to or it's not sufficiently treated should I say to actually go into the soil and so because the soil is going above the level of the bottom rail it would have been in the soil so putting iron against it is protecting that. And I put a little bit of an enclosure around here and also along the front here I've added a small amount simply because the chooks, chickens as many people call them, the chooks we often call them here in Australia, are going to be in this area and scratching around. And look, I probably, if they hadn't been around, if it had been an area where there was no scratching going on I would have just created mounds and planted into the top of those but because the chooks are around and scratching I wanted to be able to keep them out and create some definition so I've created a half height wall along here and my intention is then to build into here with some topsoil which I have got one trailer load I've purchased and need to bring in now and then I'll probably have to bring more and also some compost into the area. Now this is of course a fairly major investment in terms of time and also money. The avocado trees themselves are very expensive trees and so from that point of view I think it is really worthwhile doing this type of preparation to try and ensure some success. Also if I'm able to get these trees up to a fruiting stage it won't take many years, even probably one good crop off these avocado trees will pay for the entire investment because avocados are very expensive here in Tasmania. So it is a lot of effort, but hopefully it pays off in the end. Uh, of course, if it fails, it is an expensive failure, but you can only try. So what I'm going to do now is bring my trailer around and I'm going to try shoveling the soil straight across the fence because it's quite a long way otherwise to come in here. Because I'm going to be shoveling over this area I'm going to string line, mark and cut level this section of iron. It simply will avoid me 
having the shovel over higher pieces like this, having the, uh, the proper line along here. When you mark to a string line like this, it's not going to be very precise, but it does give you the general uh, approach. And as you're cutting, you'll average that out to get a straighter line. For the actual cutoff today, I'm going to use my power saw using an old blade. And uh, you can use that on iron. Uh, it's the first time I've particularly used it for a fence like this, so I'm going to have a go. You don't want to use a good blade, one that you intend to use ever again for cutting timber if you're doing this. Or you can buy special metal cutting blades for power saws and that would be ideal if you had one of those. Well in terms of a finished edge, that's probably the roughest tool. It doesn't leave an edge that you really would want to put an ungloved hand on. It's fairly rough but it was very very fast and the other reason I did choose it today was that it doesn't really give off sparks in the same way as an abrasive wheel or a diamond wheel would give off sparks. I have mostly used an abrasive wheel, a large nine inch angle grinder when doing this on my fences and the edge is a little nicer than this but yeah that worked. Now that I've got this uh, trailer in as close as I can to the fence I'm ready to start shoveling across. I think it's going to take a couple of trailer loads to actually fill this area. So I'm going to be here for a while. At least this is easier than wheelbarrowing it in. glad that's done. It's going to be a couple of days before I get back here with more soil now. I'm not going to bother trying to level it out. I'll let the chooks do some work on it first because I'm sure they'll do a fairly good job at leveling it out. And in the meantime I'm going to go make myself a nice cold fresh lemonade. Back here this morning on a nice overcast morning where it's reasonably cooler, not going to be too hot, to bring in the second load of soil into this area. Now I have done something in the meantime that's I've brought in some of this crusher dust which is crushed dolerite rock and I'm mixing that into the soil as I go for two reasons. One it has quite a lot of uh, coarse material in it that will basically improve drainage and the second is that it also contains fines which will give me some extra mineral into the soil. So you might say it's a, a form of rock dust but a much cheaper way of obtaining that rather than, thanks Samuel, than uh, buying proper um, rock dust products. Yes, I'm using a lot more of this than I would be if I was using rock dust, but as I say, I'm getting two elements from it. I'm getting the, uh, the grit as well as the fines. So I'm going to bring in my soil now and continue mixing this until I get it full. 
So I'm back with some compost now and I'm going to put this over the surface at about a two or three inch thickness essentially to simulate the leaf litter that would exist in the avocado's natural environment so it will feed the roots and keep everything nice and moist as well. Well I got that compost and soil in just in time. The sun has decided to break through the clouds and it's really starting to get humid but it's time now to do the easy part and the part that has been the whole goal and the reason for this whole exercise and that's to actually plant these trees now it's pretty simple I have underneath me here I have buried if I can find it now the stump and I've covered it over with compost basically my idea is that the stump can slowly rot away in the ground there and act a little bit like a fugal culture and feed the soil but getting them into the ground with this nice fresh soil is going to be really really easy but of course as in planting any tree there's the matter of orientation to consider which way do you actually want the tree to sit and is it going to be most happy? I'm sitting it with these going this way because I am going to create some uh, protection around here and that will probably be helpful if they're going this way not coming out. happy to get in here and settle in. The important thing when planting any tree is to ensure that there's no air gaps around the actual roots. So and it's got a little bit of a lean so move that over. That looks better. Now, it's always advised there's a good space between the graft here and the ground and any mulch that's placed around. This is the area where rot, if it sets in, will destroy your tree. I think this one can go right there. Now, it's just very soft. I would have watered it to settle it, but we do have some rain expected in. There's an ant there. Uh, 
probably within a couple of days so I'll just water the trees themselves and let the rain do the job of settling the rest so how's this one going to go just a gentle squeeze them generally enough to loosen up yeah that's lovely underneath yep the roots are good now as I've backfilled it some of the compost is mixed in with the soil directly around the roots which uh, is probably a good thing I could have put it in, put these trees in and then come back with the compost but uh, I thought it easier to do it the other way and I'll probably add more compost as the years go by I just want to make a bit of it pool around this so that when I water it the uh, water goes into the roots and doesn't run off so much now that they're both in the first major thing I need to do is give them a really good water because they weren't that damp in the pots and they really need that water to settle in and they're going to need it regularly for quite a while I've designed this soil to be reasonably easy draining and so these avocados both of which are has are going to need plenty of water on an ongoing basis so one of the next jobs that I'm going to be doing here is actually bringing in a watering system and I'll set that up so that it's automatic and I don't have to think about it and won't have the problem of forgetting to water them. The other thing is of course that these trees are trees that really grow naturally as an understory tree where there's a lot of cover around them and when they're young like this they are very prone to wind stress and also to sun damage. With this backdrop it's going to be quite hot here particularly in summer so I will build around here uh, a shade cloth cover. That's the reason for these pieces of wood that are still sticking up into the sky. And I also will put some shade cloth over the top for the winter to actually uh, reduce the impact of frost or any likelihood of frost actually getting on the trees. But for now, I have other jobs that I've got to get into. I've got peaches that I need to get into bottles because they're ripe and falling off the trees so that'll have to wait to next week but at least they're in the ground now and they can start settling in and with the next few days some rain being expected it'll be ideal weather for that <laughs> 